Confined to a wheelchair after an accident which left him paralyzed from the chest down, James Swayze has undergone a transformation in his thinking about life and death over the past decade. Through the internet, James developed a virtual network which ultimately helped sponsor his cryonics policy. I bring in their discussions and I wrote a long rant and let them have it basically with both barrels. And I expected to get a hundred flame messages the next day and told, why don't you troll elsewhere, dude? And uh, to my astonishment, the next day, people were calling out for pledges to, to cover me for suspension, for chronic suspension. In fact, Robert C.W. Ettinger, the actual father of cryonics, was one of them. And long story short, they just brought me into the community. And uh, nobody cared that, that I, you know, dissed them all pretty badly. <laughs> and uh, and uh, pledges went on and on and it got to about $10,000 over the next, well, about a year or so. And then it kind of languished there. And that's when Robert kicked it in his seat with 13000 of his own estate. and. With, with the proviso that the other 20,000 be reached through donations. Well, we had 10 pledged for already, so we needed another 10. And uh, it wasn't long and that was reached. And I'm fully funded for cryonics now with Cryonics Institute of Michigan. And I have this immortal debt I can't ever repay, but I'm, I'm trying to. I'm, I'm working with the Methuselah Foundation for the M Prize, and that's mprize.org. <laughs> and uh, it gives a little money each month, and I'm a volunteer administrator for the website, uh, just doing a small corner of it. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how I'm trying to, to pay back a little of what people have given me. This is a mouse prize uh, is a prize that uh, is set up to reward scientists, and it's really more of a the scientists typically aren't money motivated, at least not all of them are, most of them aren't. Um, but to reward them with monetary prize for ach achieving a milestone. And the milestone would be the, the scientist who takes a, let's say a two-year-old mouse, average lifespan is about three years, and um, sets a record for longevity for that mouse. It's it's an interesting prize because it, it won't directly affect human lifespans because it's obviously it's about mice, but it's it's a it's a positive step forward and I like it because it's not as controversial as actually trying to make people live longer. Um, you can do a lot more with mice and they've got such short lifespans and it gets people focused on the problem because if we can make a mouse that normally only lives three years and we can make it live six or seven years. Granted, it's nothing compared to a human lifespan, but considering that in the last 70 years with all our technology, all our studies into calorie restriction and genetics, the most we've gotten out of a mouse so far still isn't even five years. To be able to push that to six or seven years in a mouse that we didn't do anything medically for it until it was already in its middle age, I think that would really impress people to know that we could do that that science has found a way to almost halt aging in mice. In order to um, stimulate research on the whole idea of, uh, of life extension in mammals, um, I've been involved with a number of people, especially David Goebel, an entrepreneur from, from the um, Washington DC area, in uh, launching something called the Methuselah Mouse Prize, which is um, administered by a non-profit 501c3 entity called the Methuselah Foundation. And the Methuselah Mouse Prize is a very, very simple concept. It just says that you get some money if you create a mouse that lives to a greater age than any other mouse has ever lived before, as far as we know. Um, and the amount you get is determined by, of course, the size of the prize fund, but you don't get the whole prize fund if you, if you do it. What you do is you get an amount of it that's determined by how much you beat the previous record by. Life extension consists of attempts to extend human life beyond the current maximum lifespan. Well, I, this is the weird thing about life extension or immortality. Um, I mean, there's a group of people who take it on themselves to say, you know, we're for this thing that most people seem to be against and, and, and we really want to advocate for it. But in a certain literal sense, everybody wants to live one more day. Why is it 
difficult to get people to choose life over death. You wouldn't think that it would be all that complicated a question. I think that just by presenting it as this question and making a big deal over it, we forget how blindingly obvious the answer is. You know, if you're the sort of person who would not voluntarily walk off a cliff, then that means you're on the side of life. We could talk about that for many hours or many days for that matter, but uh, the bottom line is that, or at least the simplest way to look at it, is that most people most of the time would rather be alive than dead, and most people most of the time would prefer to extend their lives if they could, and that's all there is to it. It's just, a, just another, just, a, just an extension of what we've always done, which is to try to save and extend our lives if we can, and use medical technology if that's uh, applicable. And therefore I'm interested now in promoting the idea of cryonics and life extension generally from the point of view of, do you really want to see the people close to you die? Do you want to go to their funerals? You don't. I don't care how religious you are, you don't want your family to die. So for their sake, you might think about this, or you might think they probably don't want to see you die. So maybe it's not just a selfish thing. Maybe it's good generally for any group of people if one or more of them can avoid premature death. I'm, I'm actually really optimistic that um, there's a lot that technology can do to help us live longer, um, you know, especially with advances in biotech and nanotech and um, artificial intelligence. I mean, all this stuff is really coming together. And uh, you know, I think we're living at a really good time in history where we're going to be able to take advantage of some of those technologies and live a really long time. We are more complex than model systems. We still don't know how to do this in humans, but there is no um, physical law preventing us from extending human lifespan. To a certain extent, it's the same in any industry. And in the automobile industry, you couldn't talk about you couldn't talk about uh, about hybrids or electric power for the longest time because you were a crank, um, you were a nutcase, and you weren't going to get funding. So that just languished and languished and languished until eventually now it happens. I mean, you have to build this this critical mass, and I don't think the community is doing itself any great service by being quiet and under the radar. And in actual fact, Aubrey de Grey is, is pointing the way very clearly by being as loud and as vocal as he is. Um, and for my part, I'm really just one of a few people doing that critical little service of being a market maker for the conversation. If, if the government were to make a massive initiative toward life extension, or toward artificial general intelligence, kind of Manhattan Project scale initiative, although not necessarily run in the same way as the Manhattan Project. I think you'd see a tremendous advancement just from getting the best people in each field focused on these problems and working together with those diehards who may not have the best technical ability but have thought through the conceptual issues. Once we have the capability, Longevity medicine will drive life extension, but we're not there yet. This is the Middle Ages, you know. This is, but I say in our lifetime, the next 25 years are going to be the most exciting, dynamic times for life extension because you're going to have longevity medicine that has the capabilities for this convergence of nano, bio, IT, and neuroscience to be able to actually understand we'll have these tools we'll have this insight we'll see the precursors for a disease beginning we'll be able to correct it now every company in the world wants to you know the the medtronics of the world to make medical devices want to you know give you a device that will monitor that and to be able to help accelerate that i mean